Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This is going to be a spoiler full review of Garth Risk Hallberg's novel City on Fire. Uh, if you have not read the book and do not want to be spoiled, please do not watch this video. Uh, I will be going deeper into all topics on the book, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. Um, but I will be doing spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, please turn away now. Uh, three, two, one. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, I think I mentioned it in the last video. I'll mention it here at the top. One of the things you learn about this book when you search, do any kind of research on it is Garth Har Har Risk Hallberg received, I think, a $2 million advance, which is a very, very high advance for a first-time novelist, especially in the publishing world. This happened a few years ago with The Art of Fielding, um, which was also a book that was, I believe it was his first novel, uh, and it became a kind of a stir in the industry whenever those numbers get released. People focus on who gets those numbers, if they're connected to the publishing industry, if those numbers were deserved given the quality of the work and all those things. I feel kind of bad for authors when that happens because frequently when they have such a large advance, uh, it takes a long time for us to hear about a second or third novel I think we're still waiting on a follow-up to The Art of Fielding, and I believe this book came out in 2015, I don't think we've gotten another novel from Garth Ruiz Hallberg. So it is something of a double-edged sword. I think the number that pops up is $2 million, and that is a lot of money, uh, but if you're never gonna write another novel again, it's a question of, well, is it really that much money? Uh, you know, given the givens of everything, if you're basically blacklisted from the industry due to the high advance. Um, and from what I've heard, the book didn't do as well as people were hoping it would. Uh, that's probably for a few different reasons, obviously, but um, I did buy a copy, so I was trying to help out there, Garth. Uh, but I'll talk briefly in this video mostly about just random thoughts I had about the book. It's not really going to be as structured as my, my videos normally are. It probably won't be too, too long, but I did want to do this because there are some topics I wanted to get deeper into that I couldn't do on the spoilerful video. I thought what was interesting about the book was... They're, the book it kind of centers around six couples, sorry, three couples, six people, with some additional characters kind of thrown on. Uh, but it is an interesting technique because it reminded me of a video that I saw years ago from Joss Whedon, and he was talking about the TV show Firefly, which was which failed after the first season and wasn't picked up for a second season. But he basically said, you know, there are three types of couples. There's a couple that's together, that there's the couple that was together is no longer together, and there's a couple that can't be together. For whatever reason and this book has all three so you do have mercer and william at the beginning of the book you have um keith and reagan and then you have charlie and uh, sam and i think that that was an interesting way to structure the book i thought that uh some of the other characters the hangers on the reporter who kind of disappears midway through the book doesn't disappear essentially commits suicide midway through the book. I found that kind of be inexplicable. I didn't quite understand why that happened. The character, his neighbor character, kind of steps into that role as something of an investigator, of understanding, and getting kind of tied up in this conspiracy. Um, I didn't care about her character very much. I didn't really care about her backstory. Uh, and I felt that in the Pulaski character, who I actually did enjoy, I thought it was cool to have a, a detective character who kind of comes to this realization these things are all kind of intertwining uh, at, at uh, the same time. I thought that was interesting. I thought that um, a lot of the book that was backstory could have been cut out. I think the Mercer character especially, uh, I didn't understand why those two were a couple. I understand from Mercer's perspective why William, who's this artist, who's uh, a musician, who he kind of stumbles across to, why he would be fresh to the city into him. I didn't quite understand it from the William perspective. I think it's kind of hinted at that he may have something of a fetish uh, for African-American men. It's never quite explicitly stated, but I think that that was part of it. But otherwise, I didn't really understand their attraction to each other. I thought that um, he, you know, it's never really mentioned that William needs people to take care of him. He seems to be fine with kind of being, uh, scraping by on whatever he has uh, at any given time. I liked that character. I didn't quite fully ever grasp like what his reason for being was, if his ultimate goal was to become a famous artist or was to just, he came, seemed to kind of live in rejection of his family in a weird way that kind of didn't give him any forward momentum. 
I thought the Mercer character, given his background and given the extensive amount of you get of his background, that it would somehow make him interesting, and it really didn't make him an interesting character. He kind of begins the novel with having being a failed novelist or wanting to write a novel, and then kind of coming to the realization that he can't write a novel or it would take too much time that felt really kind of tacked on at the end of his story. And I just, I think Mercer is one of those characters that's a little frustrating because I don't think he's one of those characters who takes up a lot of space and just is not very interesting, in my opinion. Um, and the same thing with Reagan. I had a problem with the Reagan character. I had a problem too with him trying to give her some dimensions by having an eating disorder, which kind of comes up and then quickly goes away. Uh, and her... Uh, being sexually assaulted by, that was set up by her dad's, her, who I guess would be her uncle, I guess, you know, his, her evil uncle, step uncle or whatever. I thought that character, I thought we were going to get more about that character's background of why he was so amoral and we just don't. I thought we were going to get more of the character of Felicia of understanding her motives for doing what she did and we don't. And that was a little frustrating. I think her father is a one-note character who's kind of obsessed with her brother for... I don't know if there's any other reasons other than the patriarchy of him just being... Uh, your your brother is my only male son, and so I have to obsess about him all the time and wonder where he is and when he's coming back and, and just all those things. Uh, and his dementia kind of gets used in a way while I... Uh, understand that these things that that's kind of part of his character uh it did make the reconciliation between the two of them a little bit uh unsatisfying to be honest with you so there were, those were those things um i actually like the character of keith i think he at least had some conflict of being in love with reagan but also uh needing some escape in his life and also having basically made a deal with the devil that he can't get out of. And he essentially goes to, my understanding of the plot is he goes to testify, and then he decides not to testify, and there's absolutely no consequences to him not testifying. It wasn't quite clear to me. But I, I wish there was a little bit more to that character, and we had spent a little bit more time with him, because he did seem to have some nuances to him. He goes out of his way to, he has no time at all, but he goes out of his way to help an older man to his house at the beginning, um, and seems to care about his kids sometimes, but not care about them at other times. Uh, so I did feel like he was someone who I at least felt was an honest character of him trying to um, exist in the world of not knowing what to do with his kids now that he's a single parent. I thought that was interesting parts of it. I don't think they spent a ton of time in that, but that undercurrent is there. I like the Charlie character. I understood the idea of him being in this into this girl and taking on a new persona to try to impress her and kind of her becoming part of his world of him being kind of obsessed with her. I thought that was real. I, I actually liked the Sam character. I thought that the zine was really when you saw what her personality was and who this character was and kind of being torn between these two worlds. I liked her father. I thought that was an, an interesting character. So other parts of it that I enjoyed, I just thought it was it was overly long. I think there are some do, do, sex, do sex machina. Uh, moments in the book a couple times in the end I think where uh, the Venus de Milo character shows up out of nowhere Bullet randomly is in the same hospital uh, I thought that the idea of her father I think what happens is her father using the blackout as a as an excuse allows her to go off life support though that wasn't really clear but I think that's what happens and we don't ever really learn what everybody's reaction is to her death in a weird way I think Will and Kate, and Will is now the third William character because you have uh, William, who is Reagan's brother, his father, who's all, their father, who's also William, and Reagan's son, who is Will. I think Will and, and Kate, those two characters, part of it is because they're kids, but I just had, they just didn't really have a personality. And even Will as an adult, when you do get his emails to his mother, I found him really kind of an annoying character, to be honest with you. I think it was weird to me. I mean, I guess it makes sense if you're 12 years old and, and you've seen your father cheating on your mom or heard it, that you would blame your father when you clearly left the care of adults to like walk through the city. It wasn't quite 
clear to me exactly what was happening there, if he had a key to his building or didn't have a key, or if he knew what he was doing or didn't know what he was doing. So that whole section when they were searching for the kids, I, I found a little confusing. Uh, yeah, I wish there had been more, of, again, the Amory, the Amory Gold character. I think if we had gotten into his mind a little bit, I think he comes off as a mustache twirling villain who just at the end just takes a plane to another place and it's just like, okay, well, I guess I'm starting it again. It wasn't quite clear that he made any money off any of these things. It wasn't quite clear why he was so immoral, why he would just like risk people's lives just to do it. It wasn't quite clear if he had like a personal vendetta against these people. So I, that kind of irked me. Um, those are my points of it. I, like I said, there are parts of it that I did enjoy. I think the interstitial chapters, the mixed media stuff, I thought that was really interesting. I think he does different voices when he gets into those head of, heads of those characters. I think that was really well done. I just wish the rest of the book had kind of lived up to it. I just wish there was less book. I, I think if he had pared some of this stuff down, um, it would have been a stronger work. I think the whole thing with the... We spent a ton, ton of time with the post-humanists, and ultimately, it, I think their ultimate goal is to just destroy... To get re Nikki's goal is to get revenge on these people. Uh, I'm not quite sure why he's getting revenge on William. If he just feels like William uh, left too early, left the band, and just if it's an anti-capitalism thing, if it's biting the hand that feeds you, if it's all those things, what happens to that character after if he just takes off? I think sewer sewer girl getting a home with the Pulaski's. Actually, think that made some sense to some degree of them being childless and her needing a home. I thought that was fine. I wish we had learned more about Charlie and Charlie's, what happens after this book with Charlie, how he deals with Samantha's death if she does die. I wish we had gotten more of that. I think that character is, is left kind of short shift. Um, but those are my spoiler full views of the book. I, I wish we, had, we, if we had less Mercer and less, less Reagan, I think it would have been a stronger, but less Jenny would have been nice. If we had less of those characters, I think, uh, it would have been a shorter work, and I think it would have been stronger because of it. I, the reporter character, too, I don't quite understand the reporter, the, the reason for the reporter character's death and really the impact that had on the story, if that was necessary. I guess it just, if he's just maybe, if you have him in the story still, he just becomes too much of a, um, a character who's he's kind of is able to unravel the truth much faster than it needs to be. Um, I don't, if that's the reason you take him out, I guess. I'm not real sure, but that's City on Fire. I would be interested to see him do like a family, like a like a Ann Patchett style family drama. It also this book also reminded me of The Come Down a little bit by Rebecca Frumkin. You don't really have the two family structure like you have in that book, but you have this, these different family dramas. I thought that was parts of it were I would have liked to have seen him do something similar to that, because I think there are parts that have overlap with that book. Um, and if he had done something, like I said, dude, 250, 300 pages, but like a strong 250, 300 pages, because I think there's some interesting stuff in here. I don't think he's a terrible writer. There's sentence to sentence. I think there are parts where I had, I noticed myself having to reread the same sentence a couple times. So there's maybe sentence to sentence a little dodgy, but I think he, uh, I think he is a, a decent writer, and I would be interested to see him kind of set his sights on something a little bit smaller. So that's City on Fire by Garthris Hallberg. If you've read it and have thoughts on it, uh, if you think I'm way off base, uh, let me know um, in the comment section below. Uh, until next time, bye.